There we go. That was you. Perfect. Are we all ready? Mr. Jonas, I made it. I hear somebody's voice is on. All right, very well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. It is now 6.03 p.m., July 13th, 2021. I hereby call this meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Councillor Manny Martinez, could you please lead us in an invocation? Yes, thank you, sir. Internal God, I pray that you bless us in this meeting and keep us, Lord. Make your face shine on us to be gracious to us. I pray that we feel your presence during this meeting because you are with us wherever we go. I pray that your meeting focuses upon you and your plans for us today as we conduct business for our city and do the right thing for all the people that live within the city of Española and its neighbors. I thank you, Lord, in your presence. Thanks. Amen. Praise Amen. Father, Son, Amen. Please be seated. Can we please take roll and determine the quorum? Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Tim Salazar. Present. Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez. Honored to be here. Councillor Justin Salazar Torres. Present. Councillor John Ramon Vigil. Present. Councillor Manuel J. Martinez. Present. Councillor John L. Ritchie. Present. Councillor Denise D. Benavides. Present. Councillor Dorothy D. D. Valdez. Uh, she mentioned she will not be at today's meeting. Thank you very much. She's excused. Mayor Javier E. Sanchez. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. And for the record, we'd like to welcome, we have several guests uh, in chambers. We have his honor, Mr. Martin Martinez, the uh, city uh, judge. We also have commissioners, Mr. Um, let's see. Hold on one second, pardon me. Commissioner Martinez, and we also have uh, Commissioner Bustos joining us from Rio Arriba County. Thank you very much for coming in today. We'll now go on to the approval of the agenda. Move to approve, sir. Move to approve, sir. We have a motion of approval of the agenda from Councillor Manny Martinez with a second from Councillor Justin Salazar Torres. Any comments? Very well, seeing none, we'll uh, vote on the approval of the agenda. All of those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All of those opposed. Very well, the motion passes, the agenda will continue uh, before us. So we'll go on to public comments next. Commissioner James Martinez from Rio Riva County. Mr. Martinez, would you like to speak during public commentary or uh, wait, hold that off to a different time? Very well. <laughs> you, know, you don't know what you signed up for. <laughs> Very well. Who do we have next? Ms. Serrano? Uh, I apologize. That concludes uh, public comments. All right. So seeing no uh, further public commentary, we'll go on to committee chair updates and councillor comments. Councillor Manny Martinez. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Martinez for the volunteering that, uh, now that he signed in. I think we can use that for some of the volunteer work that we do need done here at the city. So thank you, sir, for signing up. Uh, just joking. I just wanted to announce to everybody that this is the time to start um, signing up for Northern New Mexico College. So if you're ready to start your fall semester, now is the time to, to get on board and uh, get a hold of the, I believe the Northern will be open 
uh, to the public next week, starting next week. So any students that uh, don't feel comfortable going online to uh, to apply for uh, sign for college, I can go ahead and do that uh, in person starting next week. Um, also, I'm going to just touch base just shortly because I know that there's several that are going to be speaking on this, but we do have a big event coming into the city on Saturday, uh, an extravaganza, fireworks extravaganza uh, that's going to be taking place um, at uh, starting all day, starting at noon. We have, uh, I believe it's over 30 booths that, it'll be, that are going to be available at the plaza, including food booths. There's going to be music. I'll touch base a little bit more with that a little bit later, but just want to invite everybody to come on out on Saturday. Uh, to the Plaza in Española for a great extravaganza and fireworks display that will be happening later that evening. But I know that you're going to speak a little bit more on that, sir, so I will touch base a little bit on that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Do we have any other council comments? Before I uh, respond to that, we'll have City Manager give an update when it comes time to matters from the City Manager. So do we have any other Councillor comments or updates? Go ahead. Sorry, there's just one more comment I wanted to make or a question I'm gonna ask, but uh, the city manager Martinez can answer that during his uh, manager updates, but questioning was why uh, the road 76 project wasn't put on this agenda. I know it was on our last official agenda in, in June. And so I just wanted to see if you can give me an update on, on why it wasn't placed on this agenda. Very well, we'll get to that when we come to city manager. Any other council comments, updates? All right, very well. Uh, seeing none, we'll go on to matters from the mayor, which I currently don't have a whole lot to mention. And we've deferred that actually to our city manager. So go right ahead. Good evening, uh, honorable mayor, members of the governing body. Thank you. I, I hope that you would indulge me to give you a little bit of an update in regards to um, things going around the city. Uh, so, and I just wanna echo and chime on to Councilor Martinez's update with the uh, fireworks extravaganza to be taking place this Saturday, the 17th, uh, a little bit more detail. Uh, so uh, for all the listening public and uh, everybody here, uh, I'd like to mention that uh, before you, uh, there are some parking passes in front of uh, the governing body that uh, we coordinated with. Uh, this has all been sponsored by the city of Española and the county of Rio Riba. Uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Commissioner uh, Christina Bu Christine Bustos in the collaboration that uh, she has had with us in regards to bringing uh, Rio Riba in, with this uh, great event that's going to happen this this weekend. Uh, the fireworks uh, will be uh, commencing at 9.15 in the evening. Uh, the, uh, I guess ground zero, if you will, will be up in Industrial Park at the open field between the, uh, the uh, middle school football field and the Espanol City softball fields. Uh, so it, it's we're looking at the highest point of elevation here so we can all from the city can enjoy from wherever they're, uh, they're located. And to chime in, uh, there's gonna be some events at the plaza. We've got uh, over, as Councilor Manny Martinez said, over 30 vendors that will be situated at the plaza from uh, uh, you know, arts and crafts uh, to food vendors uh, and also live music uh, to commence there around two o'clock. Uh, we're gonna have different uh, bands performing there. Uh, you know, I wanna give a great uh, shout out to uh, Gary V. Hill, well, they'll be performing there starting at one o'clock, excuse me, from one to two. The Dave Maestas Band, also thank you to them for pro providing their services and, and talent to this event. Uh, well, they will be conducting music from two to 3 p.m. Uh, Heartless, also thank you to them. We'll be performing from 3.30 to 4.30. And uh, to bring in the night uh, will be the, the Blue Ventures, uh, Luis Sanchez and the Blue Ventures uh, commencing at 5.30 to 8 p.m. Uh, for events there. Uh, I want to also recognize Councillor Manny Martinez who will also be uh, providing the, uh, the equipment and sound equipment for all bands to be playing there. Thank you, Councillor Martinez for that. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, it's gonna be a great service to the city. Uh, you know, this event, we're pushing it forward to uh, recognize our independence, you know, not only for uh, this country, but also with from the pandemic, you know, now that the governor has opened 100% uh, to the state of New Mexico. It just coincides with this uh, on a great event. So with that, uh, uh, if there's any other further questions on that, I would really, uh, you know, I'd answer them, you know, offline or uh, uh, in, during this meeting as well. But like, like I say before you, uh, there are some parking passes available for VIP that will, like I said, we coordinate with uh, 
Rio Riva County. Uh, they are graciously uh, uh, offering their uh, parking area up at the uh, the um, the county complex up in Industrial Park. Uh, so the the street will be closed off to uh, all the public at that point. Uh, with that said, uh, I'll continue with other items. Uh, I want to recognize that uh, with the New Mexico help uh, and the city of Espanola also with count the county of Rio Riba again, we've been collaborating to get uh, student interns uh, to work through the summer here at the city. Uh, we were able to get uh, over 23 student uh, uh, interns to work uh, for various departments throughout the city for a six week term, 20 hours a week. So uh, I know if you see, uh, come to the city and you see a lot of youth around the department, that, that's where they are. They're, they're motivated, they're here to learn and they're taking advantage of a great opportunity with uh, uh, New Mexico help to get some good uh, working experience. Uh, also, and then I'll go ahead and finish up and Councilor Manny Martinez in regards to your, uh, your question on State Road 76 as to the reason why the uh, vote on the ordinance for the amended ordinance for the increase of funding was not presented at this council meeting. I believe the well, ordinance was, uh, was not heard or voted on on June 22nd. So with uh, our interim uh, city clerk and myself, we had to get time to re-advertise and with the, the time restraints uh, she put on the paper to select for Ju uh, July 27th. So the date was very specific to be heard. Uh, you know, Once the announcement is made to the public on when the ordinance is gonna be heard, we have to stick to that date, which is uh, she posted at July 27th. Uh, I stand for any questions uh, on any other city business. Councilor John Ramon Vigil. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Martinez, I want to get an update on the north boundary of the Prince and Carter Ranch and the cleanup efforts down there. Uh, yes, Councilor John Ramon Martinez. So the uh, streets department went out there and did clean up a lot more brush uh, that's on the northbound side of the property. So we also did get a call from uh, some individuals there that I believe that that's a habitat for these uh, red-tailed hawk that housed in that area. So on, on those big trees there. So we we did leave the big trees there, but we did take away for a lot of the small brush that was located along the fence lines in that area. For follow-up. What about the overhanging that crosses the boundary line and it's a disturbance to the neighbors? Uh, no, we did not address that. That's going into private property. Uh, if the individual of, the, of those properties have a concern, they can call me directly and we can work on hand in hand to see exactly what uh, they feel that it's impeding into their property. Councilor Denise Benavides. Thank you, Mayor. Just really quick, Seamander, can we just have a quick update on the lights, the situation on getting all the street lights fixed? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Councilor Benavides. So we still do have Bixby Electric uh, on, on contract to do services. Uh, it's, it's a slow process, primarily for uh, getting supplies ordered to repair or replace items. Uh, I know that I've got a concern that the Cuñate um, bridge lights are out again. Uh, we thought it was going to be a simple fix like it was last time with Hemis, uh, that they were able to, uh, you know, tend to that and get that quickly. And so after further uh, evaluation and, and review, um, we noticed that the, uh, now uh, the aluminum wire has been stolen. So we've uh, filed a claim with our insurance and we've asked Bixby Electric to provide us a, an updated quote. They did provide us a quote uh, at the beginning of the year, but uh, you know, quotes usually last about six months. So we've asked for them to give us an updated quote and actually filed a claim with our new insurance. But the process, the progress is going slowly but surely on replacing uh, street lights throughout the city. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez. Thank you, Mayor. So I've had some concern uh, from residents in Car Lane, Starlighter Loop, that area. Uh, a lot of uh, homeless people hang out in that back area and they're concerned about the walking traffic still. But the main concern that they're concerned with now is the ditches that are on the side of the road are requiring cleanup. And they said that the last time the city mowed them, they, they mowed them, but they left all the dry brush there and they felt that that could be a fire hazard because there's wooden fences up against that. So I think that needs some attention if we could uh, possibly look at that this week or next week. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilor. Any other questions directed to city manager? Excellent. Well, we will now move on to our public hearing. We have 
before us, Roman numeral nine, letter A. City of Española, New Mexico Resolution 2021-13, a resolution requiring the prompt removal of ruined, damaged, and dilapidated structures, materials, debris, and abandoned vehicles to abate a menace to the public comfort, health, safety, and welfare at 615B Calle Olivas in the city of Española, Rio Arriba County, New Mexico, requiring the owner or owners of the properties to promptly commence and complete the removal from the properties of all ruined, damaged, and dilapidated structures, materials, debris, and abandoned vehicles, including but not limited to structures, abandoned motor vehicles, manufactured or mobile residential commercial structures, travel trailers, weeds, dead tree limbs, <clears throat> rubbish and other debris, provided that an owner occupant or agent in charge of any individual property may file written objections to this resolution, seeking a hearing before the governing body of the city of Espanola, authorizing the administration of the city of Espanola to cause removal of the ruined, damaged, and dilapidated structures, materials, debris, and abandoned vehicles, if owners of an individual property do not timely undertake such removal, and providing that the governing body of the city of Espanola, the city council, authorizes the city administrator to take action it deems necessary or convenient to lien the individual properties, pursue foreclosure of the property by any available legal remedy so as to recover its costs and expenses incurred in cleaning the property. We have before us Planning and Land Use Director, Mr. Richard Hubler. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council. So as you will recall, this resolution came before this body originally uh, back in uh, the end of April uh, related to a situation on the end of Cayo Olivas. Um, Pursuant to the uh, regulations, um, the property owner, Mr. Paul Martinez, who is with us tonight, uh, did come to the petition or come to petition the council on the May 25th meeting to give him time to clean up. Uh, he has certainly undertaken a, a, a lot of effort uh, to get this property clean and the photos that are on the screen now are those that uh, were taken uh, just this past week. Um, there is still some debris on the property. Unfortunately, this is where we get into some of the issues uh, that we originally discussed. Uh, for instance, on this photo we're looking at right now, uh, that fence in the background represents the, the uh, northern property line of Mr. Martinez's property. So the, this debris, uh, the tires we're seeing, uh, that is all actually outside of his property limits and unfortunately on the OK Wingate property. I did pass along um, the contact info uh, for uh, my contact with OK Wingate to Mr. Martinez in the hopes that they would be able to connect and maybe figure out a solution to address this. Um, the most obvious uh, recourse, of course, is to access the, this debris through Mr. Martinez's property. Um, but if we can go back to the first two photos, um, the, these represent um, the property uh, as it existed uh, last Thursday uh, when the photos were taken. And as we can see, it's uh, substantially improved over what we had um, a month or so ago. Very well. So we will begin the hearing. We'll open that up and ask anybody who wishes to speak in favor or against to speak at that time. And then we'll have, we'll close the meeting and then uh, ask questions. So the time is now uh, 6.20 PM. I hereby open this public hearing. There's anybody who would like to speak in favor, please rise now or through the computer, raise your hand. And we'd like to give everybody an opportunity to speak. So we'll also open it up to anybody who would like to speak against. And Mr. Mayor, we do have the property owner on the line with us. If we can make sure that he, uh, we coordinate his microphone. Mr. Martinez, are you there and available? Yes, I am. Um, as far as my property on my property boundary, that's pretty much clean. The, from what I see on the photos, there is a, there's a small little pile that I still need to basically pick up. But after that pile is picked up, it's pretty much my property. My property is clean on the other, where that fence ends is where that goes into OK Winga. And we just had a bunch of individuals just dumping trash throughout that. So those are, that's probably like 20, 25 years worth of of debris that's there. All right, very well. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Is there anybody else out there that would like to speak? Anybody in chambers? Okay, seeing nobody else out there, uh, I'll hereby 
close this hearing. It is now 6.22 p.m. So, Mr. Hubler, I have a question, and I don't know whether to address it to you or to Mr. Martinez, but in one of those pictures, we can see the tires that you were describing that are not on uh, the claimant's uh, property, but actually belong to OK Winge. What about that pile of dirt and trash? Is that also uh, on the property or is it not on the property? So based on our records, uh, to the best of our knowledge, everything that we're looking at here, I'm basically standing on the northwest property corner, um, looking due east. So everything that we're seeing in this image is north of his property line. His property line kind of follows the fence line uh, that we're looking at in the distance there. So this dirt pile with debris and these tires all appear to be on Okay, Wingate land. Okay, thank you for that. Do we have any other councillor comments or questions? Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez, and then we'll go to Councillor John Ritchie. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hubler, for the presentation. So what's left has been there for 20 years or so. When I became a counselor, I brought this situation to the city because it was a concern to the, to the neighbors in that area. What's left is just uh, okay, we can get property. Is that correct? Everything else that has been clean. So if just, we go back to photo one, uh, this is looking directly north from that corner. Uh, this right here is the entrance to Mr. Martinez's property. So this is the small pile he referenced. Uh, like you said, probably about a pickup truck worth just at the southwest corner of this property. Um, but that clear area that we're looking at basically is Mr. Martinez's property. And the debris piles we see in the in photos three and four are not on his property. They're obviously affiliated with this site. I mean, uh, you know, the folks dumping trash didn't care, <laughs> you know. But um, as far as the resolution goes and what we as a city can legally expect to be done, um, you know, certainly we, uh, we exceed our limitations, I think, when we expect the property owner to clean up uh, adjacent property next door, especially when it's not private property. Um, so, yeah, with the exception of this pile, um, you know, as of last Thursday, uh, Mr. Martinez's property had been cleaned up. Follow through, Mayor? Yes, of course. So, so in just uh, addressing the owner of the property, I just want to say thank you so much. This is one example of what can happen when we work with property owners. I mean, we didn't have to put any city tax money or any public money involved or lien the property or anything like that. That's incredible. I really like that this, this panned out and it worked out in the best interest of everybody. And I really feel like the owner needs to be recognized for being responsible and following through with the commitments that he made to this governing body in the last time that we saw and heard from him. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, Mayor. Um, since we've heard about this property for years, what is our last communication with the Pueblo, uh, with San Juan? Is there any action that we can jointly w work together to uh, address that? So we have not had substantive conversations with the folks in San Juan since before the pandemic. Obviously they've been extremely busy. Um, our, our last engagement with them related to properties in this area that were on the clean and lean list was pretty successful. Um, they ultimately came off our list because they were tribal properties, but uh, Mr. Phillips did engage the, uh, the same contractor the city had selected to clean up those properties on either side of El Llano Road, right behind the gas station. Um, so as far as kind of moving forward with this, it's just going to continue to be uh, making sure that he's aware. I've sent an email. Um, as I said, I, I gave his contact info to the property owner, Mr. Martinez, in hopes that he would be able to make contact while he had folks out there working on this uh, in the event that OK wanted to cover the cost of, of addressing the cleanup uh, of the pile on their side of the line. Um, but it's just going to be an ongoing thing, and, and there's nothing active uh, to that point at this time. So do you require a motion, Mayor, to not do this? Uh, I think we're going to get direction from uh, Mr. Hubler, but it is to remove it from the resolution, I believe. Okay. It's so uh, I, I, I think that we've got our attorney on as well. He and I were discussing this earlier, but I think what we actually need to do, since this resolution was passed initially back in April, um, and then it was reheard, obviously, pursuant to a protest, um, I think at this point, uh, the correct action is to actually repeal uh, this resolution. So moved. <laughs> Uh, well, we first have a couple other counselors that we're going to. Councillor Manny Martinez. 
Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to commend the property owner as well uh, for a job well done. I think he uh, is a prime example to all property owners that shows that they take responsibility for their property and are cleaning it up. And, and so I just want to thank him for that. And, and I hope other property owners that we do have on our uh, clean and lean list also take a look at what he did and, and, um, and follow suit. Uh, so thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Now we'll go to Councillor Justin Salazar Torres. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. I just want to uh, thank Mr. Martinez for doing his diligence as well as uh, uh, my question as well was for Mr. Hubler on what's our next step being that Mr. Martinez has already done his diligence. Uh, uh, how, we, how can we, excuse me, how can we move forward? Uh, in this case, I will second Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez's uh, motion to repeal uh, this ordinance. <clears throat> Mr. Hubler, was that a direct question for you in terms of what would happen next? So I, I think that the question was about the, the action of the governing body, and I believe that question's been answered. All right, very well. Any other, uh, Councilor Ritchie? I just wanted to, uh, with the trash on uh, San Juan, that invites, the, if you want to say it, people thinking that's a dump, and that's what caused this initial situation so without monitoring it or closing off the property this can happen again so i don't know what our action is again working with san juan to try to alleviate that issue so that this doesn't occur again because this was an expense on the owner which you know open property and people just thought it was a dump and it got carried away mr hubler has a response go ahead yeah, so while the problem certainly has existed before, um, the recent uh, situation kind of came to a head. Um, the exact uh, most recent kind of cause of the situation we saw in April uh, was actually a demolition that took place of a house that was on Mr. Martinez's property. Unfortunately, uh, he had a contractor that did not follow through on the obligations the contractor had made. He dropped the structures that were there, um, left them uh, and left town, maybe even went out of business. Um, and so that was, you know, that kind of exacerbated the problem. I think Mr. Martinez certainly recognizes that it's in his interest uh, to secure his property. Uh, and we can absolutely work with him, you know, as far as any fencing permits or, or that sort of thing goes. Um, but I can let him kind of address uh, the, the way that, uh, you know, it would be best to resolve that. Uh, our office will, again, now that we've, you know, kind of reached a conclusion on this matter, um, send another um, email or letter over to OK Wingate to let them know uh, that we have kind of resolved this on the, the property within the city limits uh, and kind of put the ball back in their court uh, for the uh, remainder. Thank you. Very well. Any other council comments or questions? All right. Seeing none, the floor is now open for motions. So move to repeal, sir. Second. Very well, we have a motion to repeal resolution 2021-13 with a second from Councillor Justin Salazar Torres. Can we take a roll call vote, please? Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez. In favor of the repeal. Councillor John L. Ritchie. In favor. Councillor Justin Salazar Torres. In favor. Councillor John Ramon Vigil. For the motion. Councillor Manuel J. Martinez. In favor. Councillor Denise D. Benavides. For the motion. Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Tim Salazar. For the motion. Motion carries. Very well, thank you very much. We'll now go on to items proposed for council consideration, discussion items, and action items. We have before us resolution 2021-29. Uh, are we doing the ordinance, the second ordinance? Uh, yes. Before we go on to action item. My sincerest apologies. Thank you very much for yes, uh, bringing that up. All right. We have before us uh, letter B. Thank you, Councillor. And we have an ordinance 2021-04, an ordinance establishing credit given to municipal court defendants who perform community services through the Española Municipal Courts Community Service Program. Uh, we have before us uh, interim municipal judge, Mr. Martin Martinez, and uh, he can give us a little bit of uh, insight to this uh, before we go into the public hearing. If you would, thank you, Mr. Martinez. Thank you, Mayor Sanchez, distinguished council members, 
Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, municipal court provides the credit to the uh, defendants who participate in this community service program. Honorable Mayor, can the mic be turned on, please? It's getting turned on as we speak. Thank you. Now, the credit is currently dictated by the rules of procedure for the municipal courts. Rule 82061B regarding payment of fines, fees, and costs, subsection B provides in part. And this is the applicable rule to uh, our uh, proposed ordinance. It reads in part, the defendant shall receive credit toward the fines, fees, or costs at the rate of the prevailing federal hourly minimum wage. Or, and I emphasize, as otherwise required by law, with regards to the federal hourly minimum wage, it is currently and has been since 2008 at $7.25 an hour. And I don't anticipate it's gonna go up anytime soon. So pursuant to this ordinance, if you folks approve it, we will be giving credit to participants at New Mexico's minimum wage rate. New Mexico's minimum wage rate is $10.50 an hour at present. It will increase to $11.50 an hour in 2022. So this ordinance conforms with <clears throat> the phrase that I emphasized earlier or as otherwise required by law. This ordinance will require the municipal court to give defendants credit based on New Mexico's minimum wage rate. The credit will not apply to community service that are mandated by statute. For example, first DWI simple, there's a 24 hour community service mandate. There'll be no credit for those types of uh, statutes or ordinances. In addition, in sentencing defendants, the court can impose probation, and as a condition of probation, the court can also impose community service. The credit will not apply in that situation either. Finally, and this is uh, something that I, I'm really interested in and I hope to apply to the extent permitted by law, if passed, I wanna apply this ordinance retroactively. I say as permitted by law because there's gonna be a few conflicts in uh, pursuing this retroactivity. But again, referring to rule 82061B, it reads in part, if the court finds at any time that the defendant is unable to pay all or part of the assessed fines, fees, or costs, the court shall permit the defendant to, to perform community service in lieu of payment of all or part of the assessed fine, fees, or costs owed to the court. On a number of occasions, I've brought before you the, uh, the backlog that we're addressing in the court. I believe that uh, to the extent that I can apply this credit retroactively, we should be able to address at least a good portion of our uh, existing caseload. 
So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, councilors, mayor, I believe this ordinance is both fair and just for all defendants who participate in the community service program. When they participate, after all, they're performing substantially nothing more than manual labor for the court. And they do so in all kinds of weather. Doesn't matter how inclement the weather, they're there. And uh, finally, for defendants who cannot pay their arrearages, again, addressing the potential or the existing backlog, this ordinance may or will encourage many defendants to participate in the community service in lieu of the fines owed the court. I will uh, now answer any questions that you folks may have. Motion to approve, sir. Second. Uh, before we do that, let us open the hearing and then we will close the hearing, ask any questions at that point and we'll open the floor for motions. So the time is now 6.38. I hereby open this public hearing for ordinance 2021-04. Should there be anybody in the public that would like to speak either for or against this ordinance, this would be the perfect time to either approach the podium or raise your hand out there in the visual world. And of course, we'll give everybody ample opportunity to come up and speak either in favor of the ordinance or against it. We have one person on telephone, 5181, just making sure that this person isn't here to speak either in for, either in favor or against it. Just hold off for another minute. All right, very well, seeing none and seeing no one approaching either the podium nor anybody in the visual world, we'll hereby, we'll hereby close the hearing at 640. Motion to approve, sir. Second. We have a motion of approval from, from Councillor Manny Martinez with a second from Councillor John Ritchie. Do we have any questions uh, for his honor? Thank you very much, Councillor Denise Benavides. Thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of questions. Uh, one of the first questions is, do we have a means in which we can track um, those fines and the amount that's being worked off? Because it's basically, they're gonna be working off a debt, correct? And so do we have something in place already that will track that? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Okay, okay great. Uh, in fact, uh, our program, our community service program, not only registers, but also records the community service performed and our clerks, they're the ones who monitor the uh, uh, fines and fees that are either paid or outstanding. Okay, great. And then secondly, those that do opt to do community service, is there someone who's going to be making sure that that service gets completed? That is an issue that we're addressing that has been with all the courts of New Mexico. Some okay. participants will sign up and they will either appear or they won't appear or they will appear and maybe perform half of their community service. Okay. For those folks, we have to impose the judicial remedies. Okay. I mean, I think it's a great idea. I think the community can, can stand to get some cleanup, right? And some trash removal and things like that. So I think it's a good idea. I just want to make sure that we have processes in place to be able to, to monitor everything that is going to go on with, within that process. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez and then Councillor Manny Martinez. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Judge, uh, for all your work concerning this ordinance and changing the amounts uh, to make it uh, easier for somebody to accomplish the task of 
of uh, paying the debt to our community and getting off of the roles that you have a backlog on. Uh, you mentioned something about the retroactivity and I'm curious to know how far back that will go. Uh, as I read the rule, Councillor, and thank you for your comments. Absolutely. As I read the rule, the rule states, if the court finds at any time that the defendant is unable to pay. Okay. So uh, I'm reading the rule rather liberally, uh -huh. but if we have defendants, for example, with uh, outstanding fines going four or five years, and they're rather substantial, at a hearing, I would have to make a finding that they were uh, <clears throat> unable to pay. Having done that, I believe that we can apply the uh, ordinance in those cases. This will greatly benefit the amount of outstanding warrants the city of Española currently has. I believe so, yes, ma'am. Again, uh, thank you and your staff for the tremendous job that you're all doing over there. We certainly appreciate you, Mr. Martinez. Thank you, Judge. Thank Councilor. you, Councilor. Thank you, Councilor Manny Martinez. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, for bringing this to us and bringing it uh, community, I mean, to public safety. I think this is a great way to uh, bring some dignity to these people that are already going through a hard time as it is for what they're accused of doing. And then, of course, fines on top of it. And uh, just with uh, the pandemic alone, people are having a hard time paying uh, for the regular things they have to come up with every day, much less to have to pay a fine on top of that. So this mm -hmm. is a great way to to help remedy that. So I want to thank you, sir, for bringing that, uh, bringing this to us. Uh, you also stated that this is, um, you stated in, in uh, public safety that this did not just include um, public service to the city as far as uh, cleaning mediums or that, but it can also include uh, partaking in in uh, nonprofit organizations or churches or other organizations that might require some sort of of uh, public service to to help them is that correct sir uh, not exactly with regards to churches we are not providing community service to churches per se churches that have 5013c entities nonprofit organizations those we will uh, assist with community service Thank you. Your Honor, I have a question. I'm hoping you can help me uh, understand something because I um, don't know the distinction and maybe you can help flesh out the differences. You mentioned that uh, if somebody is given probation and they're asked to do community service, that this doesn't apply because uh, the <coughs> monetary value doesn't work toward the hours versus a simple assignment of community service. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. You okay. did. So then what is the <clears throat> distinction between the two and when would a judge choose one over the other? Uh, probation is a part of the sentencing. So if a defendant is sentenced, say a fine of 100, $150 is imposed and he can do the community service in lieu of that fine, the probation is an additional aspect of the sentence. It's separate and apart <clears throat> from the actual fine. And that's why it exists in the ordinance. So that individuals placed on probation can be ordered to do uh, community service separate and apart from the, the community service done in lieu of the, the fine. Perfect, thank you very much for that clarification. You're welcome. Any other counselor comments or questions? All right, well, seeing none, we have a motion on the floor from Councillor Manny Martinez with a second from Councillor John Ritchie. Can we take a roll call vote, please? Councillor Paisio Martinez. In favor. Councillor John L. Ritchie. In favor. Councillor Justin Salazar Torres. In favor. Councillor John Ramon Vigil. For the motion. 
Councillor Manuel J. Martinez. In favor. Councillor Denise D. Benavides. In favor. Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Tim Salazar. For the motion. Motion carries. Thank you, Your Honor, for bringing this to us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you, you, Council <laughs> members. All right. Let's see if I have this correctly now. We'll go on to Roman numeral 10. Items proposed for council consideration, discussion items, action items. We have letter C, resolution 2021-29, a joint resolution with Santa Fe and Rio Arriba counties to apply to and manage the NTIA broadband infrastructure grant program. Uh, Mr. Hubler, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the governing body. Uh, what we have before us next is a joint resolution um, that uh, in covers basically a joint project. Uh, Rio Riva County, the city of Española, and Santa Fe County are working together uh, to apply to the NTIA, the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, uh, grant. Uh, this is a part of the Department of Commerce. These are large grants. Uh, as a point of reference, it was an NTIA grant that set up ReadyNet years ago. Uh, ReadyNet is kind of the uh, the common thread in, in our grant this time. Uh, we're going to be applying to expand middle mile service. Um, this uh, kind of overlaps the work that the city's already been doing um, as far as, uh, you know, providing fixed wireless service to everybody within the city limits. Uh, this is something you heard about months back that we applied to uh, Congresswoman Teresa Ledger Fernandez's office for. She recommended we continue to pursue every available funding opportunity. So we are a small piece of this project that's about a million dollars. I think the last, I, I missed uh, this week's meeting, but I think the last I heard, we were up to about 20 plus million dollars overall. A vast majority of that is uh, in Santa Fe County, but Rio Riva has their piece as well. Um, so we're all coming together. Santa Fe County has graciously offered to take the lead on the application uh, and then ultimately on the grant administration. Uh, we're doing this in support with Monica Beta and Kenny Ken from the New Northern New Mexico NCNM EDD. Um, and uh, they're helping to write the grants as well. We've got a very short time frame. This is due on August 17th to the feds. We're gonna have it done before then, but part of that is having a resolution by all the various bodies uh, supporting the application. Um, so I'm gonna turn the, uh, the mic now over to uh, Council Member Benavides, who can uh, identify some of those folks that are in the audience with you as well, uh, representing this effort. Uh, thank you, Director Hubler. I do once again want to recognize Rio Rio County Commissioner James Martinez, who is here tonight uh, in support of this resolution. He's part a portion of the staff introducing the resolution here tonight. The collaboration between everyone is really awesome to see. Uh, it's really an important resolution for our community as a whole. Uh, definitely the children of our community and uh, the, the entire community. Um, the other person I'd like to recognize tonight, uh, Commissioner Henry Roybal could not be with us tonight on behalf of Santa Fe County. Uh, Santa Fe County's Board of Commissioners did approve the resolution, I think at about four o'clock this afternoon, we were in the meeting, right? But we do have Ambra, his liaison here with us tonight. I'd like to welcome and introduce Ambra on Commissioner Roybal's behalf. Uh, Santa Fe County did ask me to introduce the bill on behalf of the city of Española, so that's what I'm doing here tonight. Um, I know that a couple of the questions that did come up uh, at Board of County Commissioner Santa Fe meeting this afternoon, uh, and I know Director Hubler will uh, go over this with us, were just the areas that will be assisted uh, as far as Rio River County goes. And we know that the entire city of Española, we, will, we won't get into the areas of Santa Fe County being assisted because that's a whole other follow up, right? That, that came up today and, and that discussion uh, was also had. And I think the other thing that's of importance to note is that uh, this grant, we hope to get 30 million chances that that we don't think are likely, but we're gonna pray and hope for that, uh, are that this actual grant is only for a year, which means that uh, hopefully there'll be some leeway to extend it. I, I don't know uh, that there will be. I don't know, Director, if you've heard anything in regards to that, but which means that ReadyNet and uh, the staff that's working diligently on this needs to move quickly. Um, I do want to definitely also recognize uh, Director Hoogler, who has been a part of this task. It's a big undertaking, let me tell you, since the beginning. Uh, Raymond Ortiz from ReadyNet could not be here tonight. Uh, also, Chris Heyer from Santa Fe County, who's the Economic Development Director, could not be here with us tonight. Uh, and I'll tell you, he's 
pulling his hair out right about now uh, and working on, on the application and the pieces. Um, again, I do want to mention that the, co the collaboration between the counties, uh, I don't think it's been seen for a while. And so uh, I want to commend both Maribu County uh, and Santa Fe County. I also want to recognize uh, Commissioner uh, Christine Bustos for being here tonight, also in support of this resolution. Uh, as well as uh, the others from Board of County Commissioner Santa Fe County who uh, supported uh, the vote today. Uh, there were many, many questions from uh, Commissioner Garcia uh, at the meeting today. It was a little intense, right, Umbra? Uh, but, uh, but we got past it and Chris was able to answer each and every question. And uh, so I think we're in really good shape other than, uh, again, uh, finding all of the bodies to, to work on, on behalf of fulfilling this resolution um, and getting the work done, I think uh, is gonna be the biggest piece. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Director Huber just to address the couple of questions uh, regarding the areas that will be assisted. And I know that it's, it's gonna go north as far as your county. So if you could just mention that for the listening public, that was one of the topics that came up today. Absolutely. Um, and as, as uh, you know, Councilwoman Benavides has indicated, this is a big project. We are a small piece of it. Um, we benefit in that uh, we're, we're kind of riding the coattails of everybody else's efforts. Um, directly to the city, this is designed to, just like our prior ask of Congresswoman Ledger Fernandez, designed to blanket the entire city or the fixed wireless signal so that everybody is eligible to get high-speed internet at their homes or businesses. Um, it is going up um, uh, several highways in Rio River County towards uh, Abiquiu and the fairgrounds. Uh, it's going out um, in, uh, towards uh, Madrid and other areas uh, in uh, Santa Fe County. It's building on uh, the expenditures that this body authorized last year with our CARES funds on State Road 76 towards Chimayo and, and, and those areas. Uh, so this is really kind of the next step. The great thing is that all the work that we did, particularly the work that the city and ReadyNet did last year, really set us up in a perfect position to take advantage of this grant to kind of do the next step. Uh, and also to benefit those, those folks that are uh, you know, on, on the borders or just outside the border. And, and that's really where the partnership with the counties came in, uh, where they're really extending their reach of this middle mile. Uh, in a lot of cases, fiber, which is super expensive, and that's why it's $30 million. Uh, and in some cases like ours, it was more cost effective and more technically effective uh, to do fixed wireless. So it's kind of a hybrid project in that regard. Councilor Benavides, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just one more thing. I just wanted to give uh, Commissioners uh, Martinez and Bustos and uh, Ambra on behalf of Commissioner Roybal here an opportunity to speak if there's anything that you'd like to mention or say. Why don't we go ahead and listen to the commissioners first and then we'll go on to councilor comments or questions. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I'm happy to be here tonight in support of this resolution. At our last commission meeting, we actually passed our portion of the resolution. So now it's your turn. But I just wanted to uh, let you know, I was actually uh, honored to be invited to sit in on one of the last ReadyNet meetings. We were actually meeting with EPS, actually the Española Public Schools, to see how we could get them on board. And I'm happy to say that they're trying it out. We're in the process now setting up three locations to see how that works. But in terms of the location, um, Councilor Benavides this is correct. Um, as I told Raymond, whenever I sit with Raymond Ortiz, I tell him I understand 70% of what he says because a lot of the technical stuff just goes right over my head. So, <laughs> you know, uh, but yes. The fiber, from what I understand, is going to be going up to ABIQ and actually will eventually make a direct line so that it'll go across to, I believe, to Los Alamos and down. Right now, uh, ReadyNet is actually providing Los Alamos County with their internet, and that comes actually from Sombrio Elementary. They have a hub there. Uh, again, um, Commissioner Martinez can tell you in his district, it's going up 76. So that's great. And also what I understand is once we have all this infrastructure in place, we can actually, uh, some of the entities as the Española Public Schools, they can put satellite dishes on one of their main buildings and actually provide to the neighborhoods. So that's gonna really impact the whole area. Another thing that is very distinct about this project and I think is great is 
not only is the city and the counties working together, but all the surrounding Pueblos are also working together. We have easement agreements with Santa Clara, Okea, Winge, Puwake. Uh, so it's one of the things that we can actually say that we're all working towards a common cause. So I just wanted to uh, express that and say, yes, I am definitely in favor of this resolution. And I hope you'll be as happy with it as, as we are at the county. All right. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, Honorable uh, Mayor Sanchez, members of the governing body. Uh, good evening, uh, City of Española staff, City uh, Manager Martinez, uh, Director Hubler. Uh, thank you for uh, allowing uh, us to join you here this evening uh, in, in, uh, in order to speak in support of this joint resolution with the City of Española. Rio Arriba County and Santa Fe County. Uh, so thank you for, for this partnership. I also wanna recognize, of course, uh, Santa Fe County for their uh, uh, joint uh, partnership in this initiative as well, uh, including uh, my friend and uh, Commissioner uh, Henry Roybal. Uh, so thanks to uh, uh, Madam Liaison who is here with us this, this evening as well. Um, we, uh, we're thankful at Rio Riba County for this uh, joint partnership. I know that uh, as commissioner in my tenure, I have uh, advocated for the collaboration uh, among the city and the county. And uh, I'm thankful for this uh, initiative that we can partner together uh, as community members and as elected officials uh, I know that I and I know that you hear from your constituents the challenges that we have faced regarding the, uh, the, uh, the lack of reliable broadband service in our city, in our county. Uh, this stretches from, as was said, uh, all the way to Chama in the north to where I live in Chimayo to Abiquiu and Truchas, Ojo Sarco, Huachupangue, and throughout the, the city of Española. Uh, we're thankful that, that this initiative is underway and we're uh, proud to be a part of it. Uh, so not only as a commissioner do I represent the constituents of Rio Ripa County, but also as a staff member of the Española Public Schools uh, during the pandemic, we saw firsthand the challenges that we faced because of the lack of reliable broadband and internet service. Uh, many of our staff and our students struggled because of these uh, technical challenges that they faced. <clears throat> I was thankful to uh, be a part of the work that the county did along with Northern New Mexico College to provide uh, hundreds of jet packs to which provided internet service to our students and staff who did not have reliable internet in their homes or in their classrooms. Uh, that was another collaboration that the county undertook with uh, our partner at Northern New Mexico College. Uh, <clears throat> I just wanna say in closing that as uh, commissioner, uh, since the beginning of my term, I have always advocated for collaboration with, with the city, with our neighboring pueblos, with our neighboring counties, with our college, with our schools. And I'm thankful that we are seeing that collaboration. And then as I close, I also want to invite the city of Española, Honorable Mayor Sanchez and the entire governing body to a joint session with Rio Riba County Board of Commissioners in order to discuss the matters and the issues that are important to both the residents of the city of Española and the residents of Rio Riba County. So uh, we look forward to that sometime soon. Uh, also, uh, we wanna thank you again and on uh, behalf of uh, the Board of County Commissioners, myself, Commissioner Bustos, Commissioner Moises Morales, newly uh, hired county manager, Lucia Sanchez. We're thankful again for this joint uh, opportunity and partnership, and we look forward 
to more collaboration with things like this in the future. So thank you again. Good evening. God bless. Thank you. Embra, please join us. Mayor, Councilors, um, I'm here on behalf of Santa Fe County Commission District 1, Henry Roybal. He had a county commission meeting today, but he also had a death in the family, so he couldn't make it. So he sends his apologies, but he is in support of, and we are um, excited for this collaboration. So we look forward to it. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Just one more thing I wanted to mention. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Commissioner Bustos for mentioning our sur surrounding Pueblos. I certainly didn't mean to, to leave them out, but there is a huge collaboration going on with them as well. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that as we go forward with the project, uh, uh, Director Hoover may mention, uh, Raymond's not here to mention it, but um, there is the opportunity for um, employment. So, you know, that's the other big piece to this is that we'll be able to employ uh, with what I feel will be some, you know, decent paying positions as we go forth. I know Raymond's already in the hunt for spicers and, and different types of positions of that sort to help with the infrastructure piece. So I just wanted to mention that the opportunities for um, those maybe uh, looking for work will also uh, be coming forth hopefully in the near future. Thank you very much, Councillor, for bringing this together and for inviting our fine guests. Um, this really shows how committed you are to bringing everybody uh, to the table. So we appreciate it and thank you for joining us tonight. We have a uh, comment or question from uh, Councillor John Ramon Vigil. Thank you, Mr. Hubler. Uh, is this a consortium of the counties or is this under the umbrella of ReadyNet? So in this case, um, ReadyNet is the middle mile provider that already represents through the joint powers agreement, all the counties and surrounding Pueblos. So they are the, the technical provider of the middle mile. Uh, mm -hmm. This application is being filed um, collaboratively uh, under the NTIA's uh, notice of funding opportunities uh, by Santa Fe County on behalf of uh, all the parties, including uh, both counties, the city and ReadyNet. Okay, for that reason, I'm going to abstain from voting on this because they are the licensee and for our poll attachment fees for Hemes Mountains Electric Co-op. Uh, Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Hubler. Thank you, Councillor uh, Denise. Uh, we talked about making it uh, the system more available to those in our community. I'm wondering if there's an affordability component that's coming with that also, and if we've even thought that far in advance. Uh, we, we absolutely have. Thank you, Councillor, for the question. That's that's a, a well-raised point, and we, we have been discussing that. Um, this, uh, for those that aren't as familiar, this middle mile basically means uh, the provision of service from the broader internet world uh, to as close as possible to your house. The last mile is what we call that final connection. So in the case of fiber, last mile kind of like your water line or your electric is from the meter into the house or in this case from the splice into the house um, in the case of espanola the last mile is actually going to be the installation of the dish on your roof so the next phase of this whole project um, is going to be uh, you know setting up that last mile provision having those dishes available the devices necessary figuring out uh, what's the cost on that what are we able to subsidize how affordable can we make it for those folks that need that? Um, because this is gonna be a mix of folks that are willing to pay for the fastest speeds they can get no matter how much it costs and folks that don't have any access currently. Um, and we wanna be able to provide those. And we've been talking through a number of options um, and uh, have some great ideas for maybe being able to provide those for some of our customers at no cost. Um, so it's, it's a broad spectrum, um, but we are looking at that absolutely. I really, Excuse me, go ahead. I'll yield to you, um, Commissioner. Thank you, uh, Councillor Martinez. I asked the same question during the last meeting. And as I said, you know, when they start talking the technical stuff, I kind of lose it. But anyway, from what they explained to me in, in, uh, in real people talk is yes, ReadyNet provides the fiber to your house. We still have to get another ISP just like Black Mesa, Windstream, or anyone to actually provide the internet. So I don't know how that's gonna provide the cost. Is that correct, Mr. Hubler? 
That is correct. The, the, the uh, ISPs are, are part of this process. Um, they are going to be um, engaged with that last mile provision. Uh, one of the nice things about um, us providing the infrastructure, this middle mile infrastructure, is we'll actually be able to help the uh, residents of the city and valley by providing a lot more ISP opportunities. Right now, for instance, Black Mesa is limited to serving those folks that can see their two towers. Cyber Mesa is limited to serving those folks that can see their tower. With this project, if it gets funded and built out as designed, everybody will be able to see everywhere. So literally every available ISP, including those that may just be starting up, for instance, TrueNet just started an ISP, uh, would be available to provide service through this infrastructure. So it really kind of uh, helps provide a lot more opportunities for customers. And that's where some of that affordability is gonna come in uh, because we may be able to, for instance, to subsidize some of those ISP costs for some of our customers. Plus there'll be more, <clears throat> instead there will only be not just one game in town. Uh, we'll go next to Councillor uh, Manny Martinez, then John Ritchie, and then we'll go back to Councillor Piggy Sue Martinez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, you know, this is exciting. This is really exciting because I think that although uh, broadband is so important to bringing uh, more business to Española, a lot more people are doing home-based businesses. So this is this is great for Española and Rio Riva County, Santa Fe County. But I think the the key word here for for what's present and for the future is collaboration, and that's the one word that I'm taking away from this is the collaboration that that the city's doing with uh, Rio Riva County, with Santa Fe County, with our neighboring Pueblos, that to me is a key component because uh, without the collaboration, we're gonna be stuck in the same place we've been for so long. And I see this as a bright looking future when, especially when it comes to the internet service, that's something that I know mo most most people are, are, are needing right now. And I just think this is a major component, but collaboration to me is what I really see looking forward. Uh, moving, moving forward to, to our future here in the Valley and in Rio Arba County, Santa Fe County, because that is much needed. And I, I can see where, if this is one project we can we can collectively work together, then, then how many more of the projects can we look forward to in the future so that we can make things better for the people that live within our, our beautiful area of Northern New Mexico. So thank you, Rio Arba County. Thank you, Santa Fe County and City of Española. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor John Ritchie. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this finally will make us uh, marketable in Española, bring, allow people to move that were uh, leery with our internet uh, connections and services. And bringing in uh, more ISPs, I think will be uh, more competitive and will help the consumer. Uh, you know, that's how you're gonna sign them up is making it affordable. And so that is real encouraging. And I think that will help us help our uh, constituents uh, afford uh, the service, the upgrade. So again, also thank uh, for all the collaboration between the counties, uh, the Pueblos, and of course the city. Um, it's a start and uh, it's a, a great start. And I, am, I also am looking forward to the future of what projects we can bring together. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Peggy Sue Martinez and then Mayor Pro. Thank you, Mayor, for returning to me. I just also wanted to uh, say that I believe that this collaboration effort is very important for the counties. Uh, this is one of the first times that I have seen both counties involved in a situation like this, and it's very exciting. I'm hopeful that uh, the collaboration between the city, the counties, and the pueblos, that this continues to build and we can build off of this. And I'm very uh, hopeful also by the comments of Commissioner Martinez that we will sit down soon and have some kind of collaboration with Viriba and some kind of meeting. So I definitely appreciate those comments, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, Dennis Tim Salazar. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. I would just like to thank, um, as well, Santa Fe County, Rio Riba County, um, our neighboring Pueblos in the city of Española. This is very exciting, lots of hope and work in progress, working together. That's huge. Also, I'd like to thank Commissioner Martinez in bringing up the discussion of uh, city governing body and the um, Board of County Commissioners for Rio Riba County meeting to have a, a joint meeting. I think there's various uh, projects and potential projects that uh, I think we could work together on. This could mutually benefit our city and our county, also in strengthening our uh, governmental relationships. 
The last time the city of Espanola and Rio Riba County met actually didn't go so well. It was more of a chastising session from a previous commissioner uh, to the city of Espanola. None of the commissioners that are on board right now um, were not a part of this. I think in the council, Councillor Manny Martinez, Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez and myself were in the city council at that time. Uh, so anyway, with that said, um, I don't think much progress was made at that time. But at the same time, this is a new day. This is new hope. So this is very exciting and, and so many projects I could think of. Um, in the recent past, I have uh, spoken with uh, Commissioner Christine Bustos about that as well to get together and um, maybe between our county manager and city manager to prepare to get things ready. But I would like to see this happen in the near future if at all uh, possible. And uh, at the same time, sometime in the near future through Santa Fe County, maybe with Commissioner Royball, we would love to do the same and see how the city of Santa Fe, um, Santa Fe County and the city of Espanola can be able to work together, um, current projects and uh, future projects as well. So just wanna thank everybody. Thank you guys. Very well. Uh, Councillor Bene uh, Benavides. Thank you, Mayor. Just for clarification, Director Hooper, in response to Councillor Donna Monbihill's question, uh, ReadyNet definitely is involved and in one of the main players in the project, but for this particular resolution and the application of the grant, it only involves the two counties and the city, correct? So I, I understand um, Councillor Ramon's comments because it's, it is my understanding, and again, Thankfully, the technical stuff is best less with uh, Mr. Ray Ortiz, um, but there, there probably is a component of this that does relate to uh, pole attachments along him as lines. So I, I certainly can appreciate where he's coming from. And I think that that is pertinent to the, to the application because it's pertinent to the project. Okay, great, thank you so much. Uh, that being said, I too uh, need to abstain from vote tonight, unfortunately. I do work for Santa Fe County. I do work for the department that is heading uh, this collaboration, so I will abstain from vote tonight as well. Honorable Mayor, is there a motion? No, sir, there is not. So I'd like to make a motion. Very good. We have a motion from Councillor Justin Salazar Torres with a second from Councillor John Ritchie for approval of resolution 2021 29. Can we take a roll call vote, please? Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez. In favor. Councillor John L. Ritchie. In favor. Councillor Justin Salazar Torres. In favor. Councillor Manuel J. Martinez. Uh, before I um, make my vote, I just want to have a clarification with the city attorney. I am an employee of Hemis Electric. Do I need to abstain from this as well? Or as an employee, am I able to vote on this? In, in your employee. In your employment with Hamas, do you do you work with ReadyNet and do the the poll licensing attachments or any sort of role like that? No, I do not. I think you'd be fine to vote on it. Then. Thank you for the motion. Uh, may I just ask a quick question? Uh, when I do roll call, I do need to uh, ask for John Ramon and uh, Councilor John Ramon and Councilor Denise D. Benavides so that they can abstain. Correct. That's correct. Okay, uh, my apologies. Uh, Councillor John Ramon Vigil. Abstain. Councillor Denise D. Benavides. Uh, thank you, City Clerk. But my question would be the same thing to City Attorney uh, Noah in, in that I do work for Santa Fe County. I do work for the department that is actually spearheading the project. I've had some involvement, but not to the extent that, say, Councillor John Ramon would have. So maybe I do not need to abstain? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think any conflict that would be raised here would be in, in terms of, of any pecuniary or monetary benefit that you okay. could see coming out of your vote in favor of this in the role that you have with Santa Fe County. If that's not the case and it's just an employment with the county. Great, then in favor. Okay, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Tim Salazar. I am for the motion. And I apologize. Did I call Councillor uh, Manuel J. Martinez? Uh, yes, you did, and I was in favor of the motion. Okay, I apologize. The motion carries. Thank you. Did we get a vote from Councillor Justin Salazar Torres? I believe we oh, did. In favor. I'm sorry. Okay. One more time, Councillor Salazar Torres, could you uh, mention for the record, because we couldn't hear you fully? 
In favor. Thank you, sir. Two, three, four, five. And uh, motion carries. Very good. Thank you very much. The motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today in uh, favor of this resolution. We appreciate it. We'll now go on to resolution 2021-30, a resolution adopting the national incident management system so that the city of Española may work effectively and efficiently with the federal and state government to prepare for and recover from domestic incidents. We have with us General Services Director, Emergency Manager, Mr. Jeff Sargent. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, uh, Councilors. Tonight, uh, I'm requesting for approval of this resolution for us as a city to be part of the National Incident Management System. The definition for this is that it is a standardized approach to incident management developed by the Department of the United States Homeland Security, and it facilitates coordination by all responders, fire, police department, city, county, tribal governments, private sector at all jurisdiction levels to protect against, mitigate, respond, respond to and recover from incidents. By adopting this system, we will be able to receive federal preparedness grants, contracts to help us become further prepared to be able to, when we have an incident, we will have a set guide as to what we want to do, how we want to do it, what equipment we would need, what collaboration we would need from other entities, and to where we would have a common terminology and use of each other's facilities and our, our strengths to be able to get through incidents and manage them and uh, recover and, and just do well for our constituents and the people of our community. Uh, this also enhances organizational and technological interoperability and cooperation. It provides a scalable and flexible framework with universal applicability. This also promotes all hazard preparedness and it enables a wide variety of organizations to, to participate effectively in emergency management slash incident response. And lastly, it institutionalizes professional emergency management incident response practices. I stand for any questions. Motion to approve, sir. Second. I have a motion for approval from Councillor Manny Martinez with a second from Mayor Pro Tem, Dennis Tim Salazar. Um, any questions? Actually, I'll, I'll start with the first question, if that's all right. Do, mm -hmm. it, does this require the purchase of any hardware or software that we would be responsible for? No, sir. What this allows us to do is we would be able to tap into resources for funding to be able to establish our framework in collaboration with Reriba County, with our tribal entities, anybody, uh, to where we would be able to create a, a sustainable group of, of people and communities that would work together to just make responses to any incidents scalable and to where we could work with them and be successful at them and be professional. Thank you, sir. Councillor uh, John Ritchie. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Jeff, did we have to uh, qualify for this or is this something that was available and we just finally applied or did this is something that has always been available. It has just been something that we have not reached for or attained. Uh, we have worked in collaboration with Riariba County in the past. They were the, let's call it the spear. At, they were the main focus. But what we have seen uh, nationwide is there are a lot of communities slash cities that are in conjunction with the county doing this to where they can individually tap into resources to where if we have incidents that are specific to the city, we can address those and have the funding and the availability to be able to respond to those incidents. Thank you. Councillor uh, Peggy Sue Martinez. Thank you, thank you for your presentation. Yes, ma'am. Uh, curious to know if this uh, provides any training to the staff, what's available beyond just becoming a member of this? There is a lot of 
opportunities for training and learning. Most of these, uh, I have been doing this with the Los Alamos schools where I had worked previously in my previous uh, employment. And I had worked in collaboration with the county. So it, it worked very well to where we could, uh, how, can, how can you say it? It's, it's ask me your question real quick one more time. That way I can make sure that I answer I it correctly. It, my question was, is there going to be uh, training, training opportunities yes. for staff? So there's online training and there are actually other trainings that are available that are in person. Uh, and there are also opportunities to where we can get the information that we need. I can actually tap into resources at the state level, county level, uh, federal level, to where we can get information to where we are not reinventing the wheel in what we are trying to uh, approach or what we're trying to gain. But we will also we will be able to make it to where it's individualized to our communities, specific to our community, because everybody is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thank so you. we'd be able to respond to incidents such as uh, a first shooter incident, a bombing, uh, flooding, extreme heat, earthquake. cold, drought, earthquakes, <laughs> everything and anything. So it's a hurricane. No, no hurricanes. So it's, it just helps us to be prepared to where if any of those situations comes up, we know what to do and we're not flying by the seat of our pants. Good job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, well, seeing none, we will now take a roll call vote. We have a motion from Councillor, I think it was Manny Martinez with a second from Mayor Pro Tem. Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez. In favor. Councillor John L. Ritchie. In favor. Councillor Justin Salazar Torres. In favor. Councillor John Ramon Vigil. For the motion. Councillor Manuel J. Martinez. In favor. Councillor Denise D. Benavides. In favor. Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Tim Salazar. For the motion. Motion carries. All right, we'll now go to resolution 2021-31, a resolution adopting the Americans with Disabilities Act, self-evaluation and transition plan. Mr. Hubler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the governing body. Um, so before you now, we have a resolution to accept and adopt the um, ADA self-evaluation and transition plan that was uh, produced uh, through the work of ourselves and the uh, Mile High Accessibility Incorporated. Um, we reviewed this uh, during a public meeting um, at the last uh, public works um, committee meeting um, and received uh, no comments from the public. That's part of the process. Um, we do certainly have the ability to, to uh, you know, continue to accept those comments moving forward. Uh, this plan does make a number of recommendations. It also sets out a suggested time frame. Uh, that's all just to give us guidance as we move forward. Um, and so what we're doing at this point is uh, officially adopting the plan as our transition plan to move into greater compliance. Some of the items that have been identified on this plan have actually already been addressed or in the process of being addressed. Uh, Valdez Park is a perfect example of that. Um, the uh, streets department was out actually last week and the week before uh, painting the uh, sidewalks here in front of City Hall. So we're working on those kinds of places as well. Um, so this is gonna be a long-term multi-year process, um, but this is the very first step. It basically identifies uh, what we need to do uh, and uh, make some suggestions about how we can go about doing it. And it uh, makes us eligible now to receive federal monies for a variety of programs, including particularly those through the uh, Federal Highway Administration uh, and ultimately through NMDOT if their projects involve Federal Highway Administration money. Um, motion so motion to approve, Mayor. <laughs> we have a motion of approval from Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Tim Salasad with a second from Councillor Manny Martinez. Do we have any Councillor questions or comments? Mr. Martinez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Hubler, how, how does this uh, work with, I know that you had already, they had already started working on some of the uh, accessibility areas when it came to where we have sidewalks, mainly in the, in the, in the corner areas where the lights are associated, but how is this gonna work with uh, areas where we do not have any uh, sidewalks, just for instance, like La Jolla Street, are we gonna look to redoing roads such as that to provide 
um, sidewalks and then of course areas where wheelchairs can be accessible to go on those sidewalks as well, sir? That's an excellent question, Councillor, and that highlights a key um, issue, I guess, between the responsibility that the city has to our population and that which is required by the Americans with Disabilities Act. So the ADA requires that uh, we work to get better over time. Um, the city, of course, has an obligation, in my opinion, uh, to, uh, to best provide for all of our residents. So uh, the ADA looks at those sidewalks that are already existing, determines if the curb ramps are sufficient, if the detectable warning signs are in the right place, uh, the little bumps on the, on the bottom of the sidewalk ramps, um, you know, and those kinds of things. The, uh, the city has a lot of roads that the ADA doesn't apply to just because we don't have any sidewalks at all. Now, the good news is we know how to build sidewalks the correct way. So as we continue to work forward uh, in general about making more complete streets and adding sidewalks, for instance, along La Jolla and other places, we can do it right. Uh, and this meantime provides us the pathway to fix those places where it's wrong. I should also mention at this point that this only uh, works with those uh, facilities, both physical facilities, uh, as well as programmatic facilities and rights away that are the responsibility of the city. The DOT has their own ADA transition plan for all their, um, their jurisdiction. And so we've seen actually recently, they've been redoing some of the intersections where the signals are um, as part of their responsibility to fix that stuff. That is not part of this plan. Our plan is for those streets like Coronado, La Jolla and the other 235 or so uh, that belong to the city, but not the state roads. Okay, on a follow-up question, is the city currently uh, up to date when it comes to, uh, to, uh, to accessibility, when it comes to our current facilities, parks, buildings, et cetera, both uh, with access and also uh, with restroom facilities? Uh, the short answer to that is no. Uh, and this plan actually identifies a number of the shortcomings. There is a, uh, a portion of this plan uh, that's actually was provided to us by the consultant uh, that's kind of a spreadsheet that goes through each individual. It's basically all the reports for all the 35 or so facilities that they, uh, that they interacted with. And that includes things like, you know, uh, restaurants without grab bars and the bathrooms. It includes, you know, narrow doorways or ramps that are on slope, uh, all those kinds of things. So there's a, a number of areas uh, in our parks, uh, in, our, in our buildings uh, that we are going to have to address over time to come into full compliance. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, and then we'll go to Rich, Councilor Ritchie and then Councilor Peggy Sue Martinez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Director Hooper knows how excited and happy I am that this has become a reality. Um, this is awesome. It's been a long time coming, and I think this opens up so many doors for opportunities for federal money. And you know, I just want to thank Richard. Um, Richard, thank you and your staff for all your nonstop hard work for this. It's been a um, you know, long time coming again and uh, nonstop hard work. So I just wanna thank you guys so much. Thank you, uh, Councilor Ritchie. Thank you, Mayor. Um, likewise, that was my comment was that this was a piece that we were missing um, that would allow us for uh, federal funding and um, Director Hubler and his staff uh, put a lot of effort into this and, and getting this done. And again, I wanna thank you. Um, this opens up so we can make it more accessible to our community throughout our city. And uh, again, thank you for all your effort and your work. Councilor Peggy Sue Martinez. Thank you. This question is from Mr. Hubler. Also just concerned with uh, types of funding that are available for this initiative. I know there's federal money, but I'm wondering if there's any other funding available to help us be more in compliance with uh, moving forward on making this initiative happen? That's an excellent question. And that gets at the, the, um, the complexity and the nuance of the kind of funding issues around this ADA plan. So this, this has been law for almost as long as I've been alive. Um, most cities like us, uh, we're not alone in this by any means, are still struggling through decades later to fully implement and the realities of this situation. Um, and so the federal government and ultimately the state government have been taking a progressively harder stance on at least, uh, you know, getting on the program effectively like we are now, recognizing what we have that's wrong, that we need to fix it. Um, and so um, that, since we're now um, compliant in that regard, that opens up funding for a variety of other things that is not related to ADA at all. Uh, so for instance, we can't get federal highway money for 
repaving a road or constructing an intersection, even if there's no ADA facilities in there right now because we were not compliant with this mandate. So that's one side of the funding piece. The other side of the funding piece is that this is, as I indicated before, a long-term multi-year uh, process. And some of these things are uh, facilities-based, uh, some of them are rights-of-way issues, some of them are programmatic-based. Um, and there may be funding available from particular um, you know, parties that are interested in certain things. You know, sports-based funding oftentimes helps schools come into compliance because it, it helps them fund better sports programs and better attendance. Uh, you know, and so we could see things like that similarly for some of our programs particularly, um, but also potentially for some of our buildings. The library has some issues. The library, various library foundations or, you know, philanthropic groups that support libraries may be willing to generate, uh, you know, donate money to help us address these issues of providing better library service. So there's a myriad of funding options, which we, many of which we may not even be aware of, aside from those ones that we specifically know we can't get without this check in the box. Thank you very much, Mr. Hubler. I appreciate it. All right, seeing no further questions, we have a motion from uh, Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Tim Salasad with a second from Councilor Manny Martinez. Can we take a roll call vote? Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Tim Salasad? For the motion. Councilor Denise T. Benavides? In favor. Councilor Manuel J. Martinez? In favor. Councilor John Ramon Vigil? For the motion. Councilor Justin Salasad Torres? In favor. Councillor John L. Ritchie. In favor. Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez. For the motion. Motion carries. Very well. Thank you very much, Mr. Hubler, for everything. And we'll go next to RFP 2021-12, request for proposals for professional engineering services, Sauter Miller. And we have uh, Ms. Josephine Velasquez. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, and members of the governing body. Uh, I come before you to present the recommendation made by the evaluation committee in regards to professional engineering services as needed. Three proposals were reviewed on July 8th, and the, the following criteria, criteria was factored in. Uh, tech technical competencies, capabilities, um, past record performance, familiarity of the area, um, the amount of design work that has been produced by New Mexico business within the state, and then uh, volume of work that has been previously done. Cost was not an a element that was used for scoring this RFP. Uh, keep in mind that all services will be handled through task orders and will be funded through um, project specific, specific funding sources. The bids that were received um, and their tabulation scores are as follows. Sauter Miller and Associates scored 345. WH Pacific and NV5 company scored 337. And Molson and Corbin scored 306. Based on the committee, the, recommend, um, the committee recommends to award um, WH Pacific and Sauter Miller and Associates as the engineer of record. Um, we felt that this will be beneficial for the city to have two companies um, that will represent the city. They both uh, describe the same qualities of services. And again, it's expanding our resources. So I stand for any questions. We have a question from Councilor Peggy Sue Martinez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so cost was never an issue because it's a pre uh, predetermined cost whenever we utilize them. Is that why? Uh, Councilor Martinez, it's because it's a professional service right. rather than. So do we know what each company charges per hour or we don't? It's uh, primarily based on project specific. Based on the mm. a percentage of each project. That's yes. what I thought. But I just want to make sure. Thank you. Very well. We are still. Uh... Open for potential motions. So moved, sir. I'm sorry. Thank you. We have a motion for approval from Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez with a second from Councillor Justin Salazar Torres. Um, now, just for the record, on the agenda, we are showing uh, professional engineering services, Sauter Miller, 
but we are not showing the WH Pacific. Is that right? Yeah. But what is uh, the- Mayor, I think that that was a typo. I think that it's currently the um, Southern Miller and Associates is our current uh, engineer of record. Okay, and so what is the uh, desired motion? So it would be under um, WH Pacific and NV5 company and Souter Miller and Associates. Okay, so in other words, both engineering companies will be uh, available to the city should we require engineering services. And that decision between the two would be made how? Uh, so we thought maybe a... Um, That, it, that we could possibly alternate um, companies based on projects or um, size of projects so okay. that we don't I overwhelm one project or project more than the other. I, I certainly understand the, the desire to have more than one engineering company on, uh, on retainer, especially in case one provides uh, perhaps more uh, dedicated services to one project or another. So uh, I'm, I am fine with that. Uh, now, the maker of the motion, are you okay with making both companies available to the city? I don't have an issue with it, but I would like uh, the name of the second company uh, named again, please. Right. So the motion on the floor is to accept both Sauter Miller as well as um, WH Pacific NV5. It's, it's an, an NV5 company. An NV5 company. So... WH Pacific and Sauter Miller for the record. Uh, I'll go ahead and make the motion to approve though. I just want to note that it was not printed like that in, in the agenda and make sure that that's okay with uh, going through the attorney. Thank you, Councilor Martinez. Yes, that's a valid concern, uh, but I think that the agenda item is reasonably specific enough to allow the council to- Thank you, Jonas, that appreciate that. So the uh, motion is stated, sir, thank you. And the seconder of the motion, Mr. Uh, Justin Salazar Torres. I'm okay with that, thank you. <clears throat> Very well, we have a motion and a second. Uh, should anybody have any questions? Please raise your hand now. If not, we'll go ahead and take a roll call vote. Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez. In favor. Councillor John L. Ritchie. In favor. Councillor Justin Salazar Torres. In favor. Councillor John Ramon Vigil. For the motion. Councillor Manuel J. Martinez. In favor. Councillor Denise D. Benavides. In favor. Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Tim Salazar. For the motion. Motion carries. Very well, thank you very much. So we have now reached the finance board uh, portion of the agenda. However, with permission of the council, I'd like to take a quick 10 or 15 minute recess. 10. 10, very well. We're now in, uh, yeah, that's right. Now in recess for 10 minutes, please.
All right, very well. Thank you very much for your indulgence. It is now 7.48. We're now out of recess and we will continue the meeting. Thank you. So before us, we have the fiscal year 2021 fourth quarter financial report ending June 30th, 2021. We have Administrative Services Director, Ms. Jessica Ortiz. Good evening, Mayor. Um, members of the governing body, thank you for having me tonight. I am here to present the fourth quarter report ending June 30th, 2021. So this is the end of our fiscal year, looking at our general funds year-to-date revenue. We collected $11,271,774, which was an increase of $650,237. We had year-to-date expenditures of $11,134,081, leaving us with a positive year-to-date variance of $137,694. Our FY21 revenues increased by 592K from this time last year, June 2021 versus June 20. Increases have resulted from an increase in GRT and property taxes primarily. GRT increase of 524.6K, Rio Riba property tax increase of 35.7K, and Santa Fe, uh, Santa Fe County property tax remain flat with 202.8K. Our FY21 expenditures increased by 490K from this time last year, June 2021 versus June 20. Increases have resulted in increased um, attorney costs, which is our, it's labeled attorney cost department, which is comprised of all the attorneys that are, um, provide professional services to the city, as well as claims, judgments, and settlements. So any claims, tort claims that we pay out, they're all captured under the city attorney department budget. We've also, um, had to account for E911 JPA costs in the amount of 94,000. And then we've also had an increase in public safety costs. Um, as well as our non-employee insurance costs. In our water fund, we had year-to-date revenue of $3,139,720, a total increase of 233K from this time last year. Year-to-date expenses of $3,201,736, which was an increase of $700,492 from this time last year. Um, we did end up with a negative variance of $62,016, um, but we did have three vehicles that we carried over from fiscal year 20, just due to the timing of delivery. So those all got um, expensed this fiscal year. Our um, FY21 revenues, like I mentioned, increased by 233K. This was primarily due to increase in water sales and scrap metal recycling of 40,000. Our FY21 expenditures increased by 700,000 from this time last year, uh, a result in increased maintenance for uh, building structures, equipment, vehicles, grounds and roadways, as well as the non-employee insurance costs. And we also um, had the expense of the nitrate removal system in addition to the three fleet vehicles. So this year was a, a very expensive year for us. In our wastewater fund, we collected year-to-date revenue of 2,187,967, which was a slight increase of 39,920 from this time last year. Our FY21 expenditures increased by 158,000. So total year-to-date expenditures of 2,446,695. We did have um, a decrease in full-time positions. That's because we have been short-staffed. However, we had an increase in equipment and machinery. We paid off our brown bear uh, lease. We purchased a hydro get gritter, and we also had increased non-employee insurance costs. Do you have any questions on the summary page? No? Okay, moving on to page two. This is looking at our total revenues. So total time elapsed is 100% of the year. Again, total uh, revenue collection in the general fund is 11,271,774. Our utility water was 3,139,720. 
and our wastewater fund was 2,187,967. So you can see that, you know, on the top looking at our year to date actuals versus year to date budget, our variance in the general fund was 5.8%. In our utility water department was 2.4%. And in our wastewater, we were slightly under by 4.6%. Moving on to page three, looking at our expenditures, we had a general fund of 11,134,81, which is a 6.15% variance. Utility water was at 3,201,736 with a 12.95% variance. And then in our wastewater fund, 2,446,695, which was a 18.74% variance. So we did spend, like I did mention in the summary page, our expenditures were a little bit higher this year than the year past. And that's that's evident that's shown on our chart up above. Looking at our gross receipt taxes, we collected a total of $10,923,734. So this was a 6.6% over last year's. Um, looking at our June, comparing June 20 to June 2021, we had a year-to-date increase of $679,598. Do you have any questions? Okay, looking at our page five, this is our revenue by source. Um, nothing new on this page. Again, our state share taxes is our biggest contributor to our revenue source at 54%, followed by our local taxes at 34%. So total um, revenues for June month end was 1,070,931. Total year to date, 11,271,774. Our expenditures by source, public safety leading at 37%, followed by the administrative costs of 35%, and then the remainder of the departments uh, make up the remainder of the 100%. Total expenditures for June month end was 956. 1,377, and total year to date was 11,134,081. Lastly, revenues versus expenditures, we did um, end up in the <clears throat> with a positive variance of 137,694. So this was pretty much where my ending number was, um, you know, going into June month end with all of our expenditures posting. So I'm glad to say that we ended with a positive variance and not a negative variance. And again, that's just managing revenues to expenditures. So that doesn't factor in any type of prior year cash for the general fund because we did end with the positive variance. And then the last page, seven, seven and eight, it's just a summary breakdown by revenue source and by expenditures within each of the departments compared to last year. Um, so you can see, you know, our gross receipts tax, for example, if you look under municipal gross receipts tax, um, our budget was 3270000 We actually collected $3,458,437. It was an increase of 159737 from this time last year. Our gross receipts state levied. Um, our budget was 4232265 And keep in mind that we were conservative with these numbers as we took a 1% decrease when we developed this budget. So with our actual revenue, we collected 4516540 So that was about a $300,000 difference. So that pretty much makes up the 500K difference in our gross receipts tax. And then you can see our property taxes. Those have also gone up from um, this time last year, 35,000 in Rio Reba, and Santa Fe County went up by $75. So that pretty much stayed flat. Uh, Ms. Ortiz, I have a question before we move on. On page seven, uh, on the revenue side, that's down under various and other. Yes. For miscellaneous, we have uh, it down uh, 73,810. Could you uh, describe what that number is? Um, yes, so at that time, so uh, the June 20 
So that was for, um, I believe, Chris, do you recall what the most miscellaneous was? Was it COVID money? The COVID money that we... I'd have to double check on that one okay. just to be sure. If you could get back to me on that. I'd yes, I can. It. I'm sorry, Councilor Peggy Sue Martinez. Thank you. Jessica, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, revenue side of things where we're looking at the business licenses and we're down uh, 30,000 with a projected 41,000. So we're down $11,000. Do you know what's going on with that? Is Was there businesses that closed during COVID or what happened? If I recall, I believe because of COVID, they were given an extension, but I would have to confirm with Angelica. Um, I think the extension was given up until July. Normally business registrations are paid in January, uh -huh. but I think we, they were given up until July. Ty, would you happen to know if that, if we did the, um, if we collected, if we extended the business registrations until July for the uh, first department. Not too sure on that. Okay. Mr. Hubler, go ahead. I was just gonna say, we did not extend the business registrations. Um, we, we didn't uh, be aggressive about levying the penalties for those folks that missed the January 31st deadline. But as of now, we've collected uh, basically everybody that was registered last year with, with just a few exceptions. So the $11,000 variance, Mr. Hubler, was an over projection on our part? So it, it relates to the uh, expected, uh, I think from years prior, um, over the past couple of years, we've had some folks that have not been doing a good job of, of renewing year over year. Uh, and we're working with that. Without seeing more details of that line item, I couldn't speak particularly to that variance, but um, the, the businesses that we identified um, that had registered over the last two years that we sent out renewal letters to uh, Angelic and I last fall, um, nearly all of those did renew. Thank you very much, sir. All right, Ms. Ortiz, you can continue. And that actually concludes my presentation of the fourth quarter report. So I stand for questions at this time. And or approval for the resolution approving. Yes. So moved, sir. Second. We have a motion for approval of resolution 2021-32 uh, from Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez with a second from Councillor Manny Martinez. Do we have any other discussion? Councillor Benavides? No. All right, very well. We'll go ahead and take a roll call vote, please. Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez. In favor. Councillor John L. Ritchie. In favor. Councillor Justin Salsat Torres. In favor. Councillor John Ramon V. Hill. For the motion. Councillor Manuel J. Martinez. In favor. Councillor Denise D. Benavides. In favor. Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Tim Salazar. For the motion. Motion carries. And did we get Councillor Justin Salazar Torres? All right, very good. Thank you very much. We can now proceed. Okay, so thank you. Before you, I have the FY22 final budget. And we'll give um, a minute to get that up on the screen. Okay, so thank you. Before you is the FY22 final budget summary page. There wasn't very many changes to what we approved within the general fund, water fund, and wastewater fund. So in our general fund, we had, we started our interim budget with revenue of $11,121,485. We accounted for prior year cash of $743,025 for a total projected revenue of 11,864,510. We are required to do calculations for operating schedules for our property taxes, and it's a DFA requirement. So they, what they do is they give us three different sheets. They look at the total um, residential valuation, non-residential valuation. Then they look at the collection rate, and they look at the average collection 
over three years. So once you plug in all those numbers, it populates a number for you. So I've done that. And it actually, our property taxes had an increase of 29,735. So I have to account for that based on DFA requirements. Um, so therefore our general fund expenditures, our interim budget was 11,864,510. We did have an increase to our E911 JPA of 14,000. So that brings us from 92,000 to about 104,000 annually that we need to pay to E911. And then we had about $15,000 left in um, revenues to expenditures. So city manager, myself, Ursula discussed that it would be best to put that 15,000 aside for a compensation study. Um, it's, you know, we're in dire need of one. Um, our salaries are kind of all over the place. We don't have, you know, consistency. And I think that's very important going forward to make sure that all our staff is compensated fairly and equitably. So I think that's one of our priorities going into FY22. So that brings us to total FY22 expenditures of $11,894,245, bringing a balanced budget in the general fund. In our waste, in our water revenues, I'm, I'm sorry, our FY22 interim budget, we had a revenue of $3,088,489. Prior year cash of $698,879. They've um, sold a lot of their scrap metal from old meters that they had. And uh, so that with that revenue, they generated $40,452. So we added that revenue back in bringing total projected revenue for FY22 to 3827820 Our interim expenditures were budgeted at 3787368 Our non-employee insurance did increase. So to um, equitably split the cost, we had not really affected water wastewater. Um, but they do, I mean, looking at our total expenditures, the increases affect all departments. So we had sufficient budget within the general fund. Um, we didn't need to increase that there. And so there was an increase of 25,000 for water, bringing our total expenditures to 3,827,820. So bottom line, balanced budget. Our wastewater revenues were budgeted at 2,293,121. Uh, prior year cash of 667,217. Total revenue uh, projected of 2,960,338. Um, I did have to increase prior year cash. I, it was either prior year cash or sales, but you know, looking at our trend in sales, I mean, 15K is in material on a $3 million budget. So at this point, we said, we'll go ahead and put it into additional prior year cash. The only increase we had in expenditures for wastewater was the non-employee insurance portion of 15,000, bringing our total FY22 expenditures to 2,975,338, presenting a balanced budget. Move, sir. Second. We have a motion for approval from Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez and a second from Councillor Manny Martinez. Do we have a uh, council discussion comments? Under discussion. Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez. Under discussion, just thank you, Jessica, for the presentation and thank you for balancing the budget. Even with that 15K extra, I think it's, it's important. I think that there's some things that we should think about. There was 40,000 that was brought into the water, uh, possibly uh, <coughs> looking at the possibility of uh, taking the, the parks to the kids still, that's something that I really like to see happen, uh, getting our kids outdoors more and trying to pu push that initiative to get a van maybe and fill it up with uh, recreational supplies for kids and move that van all around the city and the parks. So that's something that I'd like to see happen, but certainly appreciate every, everything that you and your staff are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilor Manny Martinez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you again for the balanced budget. Um, great job. Uh, although moving forward, I, I think we need to uh, look for the future of how we're going to not just uh, look at how our current employees are compensated correctly for what they do, but also for moving forward with uh, positions that we need to fill and where that money is going to come from as far as staffing, 
Um, and also, of course, with the fire department that needs to come up to par when it comes to what the requirements are of how many employees they also need as firefighters. So I'd like to see how we can move forward with that and see where we can come up with uh, juggling the numbers to see if we can get some more staffing on that part. You know, and as I've always mentioned, you know, Espanola is very fiscally challenged, surrounded by two counties, two Pueblos. You know, we fend for ourselves to, you know, to generate our GRT tax. And that's, you know, looking at our pictures, 78% is GRT tax. So it's important that people continue to shop local and, you know, spend here in the city to help grow our GRT base. So, you know, with that, that helps increase revenue and, you know, bring in more positions. Thank you. And I think with that, with the collaboration that's going on right now with uh, ReadyNet, with the bringing broadband may help uh, bring more business to Española as well, making it more friendly to, to bring that business and bring that GT, uh, GRT up. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, seeing no further uh, city manager, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Honorable Mayor, members of the Governing Party. I, I think that's very important that we need to address as well as the uh, American Rescue Fund uh, uh, funding that we're going to receive. Uh, so, Jessica, can you uh, address that, please? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. So, that, so, following the summary page um, that I just presented, you will see, if you scroll down, Ty, there's the list of all other, other funds, which are all our grants, um, LEPF that we receive from outside entities. So on fund 260 is the new fund that is set up for the ARP fund. And that correlates with the DFA requirement 260. So it's just easy to kind of map it over since that was an available fund. But if you do scroll down tight um, a little further down to 260. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, right, right here. So a little bit more up. Next page, right, right there. So you'll see um, in the ARP, the American Rescue Plan Act, we are, so we are expecting 50% um, of our total allocation. So 50% of that total allocation for FY22 is 1,241,978. We did talk about unfreezing positions that were currently frozen in the budget that we had to freeze because of um, revenue constraints. That did include the court clerk, the community services admin, the lifeguard, the GSD service worker, and the street service worker. So that came out to about 240000 that we allocated from ARP to unfreeze those positions. So that's something that we'll have to fund going into the following fiscal year and then ensure that we do have funding to pick them up on the third year after that. Um, the remainder, Ty, if you can scroll down a little bit in our expenditures, you can see, like I said, we put that 240K into full-time positions. We also accounted for 105,000 for a match for the fire vehicles. So the fire department recently received 113,000 from the EMS Bureau to purchase a, a special unit, which is an ambulance. Um, the quote that we did receive was about 190000 so the city's responsible for picking up the additional cost. It is um, uh, public health and safety, so we did feel that it was justifiable under the ARP funding, so we budgeted 105000 for that. And then the rest of that, we kind of threw into the infrastructure projects um, as a holding spot. So 902,887 is currently sitting for infrastructure projects that we have uh, going forward to get, get them shovel ready. Thank you, Jessica. You're welcome. All right, very good. So we have a uh, motion on the floor for the approval of the budget from Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez with a second from Councillor Manny Martinez. Can we take a roll call vote? Councillor Peggy Sue Martinez. In favor. Councillor John L. Ritchie. In favor. Councillor Justin Salazar Torres. In favor. Councillor John Ramon Vigil. For the motion. Councillor Manuel J. Martinez. In favor. Councillor Denise D. Benavides. In favor. Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Tim Salazar. For the motion. Motion carries. Very well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We've now reached the end of our agenda.